I cover a lot of content as a podcaster, as a newsletter publisher, and I will admit up front that it's not always easy to manage this content. So I'm going to share with you three key strategies so that you can have basic elements of every communications to at least generate leads and to make sales with new customers. I'm Justin Hitt with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips, where we serve copywriters and marketers who might be creating content for someone else, or they may even be creating content for themselves. But no matter what content you create, it needs to contain certain elements that help you attract qualified prospects, generate leads, and ultimately set up a sale so that you can serve that customer because very often you've studied years and years and put in a lot of experience to be knowledgeable in what you do yet if you don't have the credibility the reach and the connections you will not get new clients and so we're here really about helping you get more clients helping you create and keep profitable customers and so any piece of content you create will have these core elements in it let's start with the author byline the author byline is critically important because it sets up who you are in relation to the content or article you've produced and gives the individual the most basic contact information so that they can reach out to you and ask additional questions or to engage you or to otherwise uh, benefit from an offer. So the author byline, depending on whether you're publishing on your own platform or publishing on someone else's platform, is going to demonstrate your expertise in the topic area. It's going to provide the extent of your certification or claim, which is very important right now in, in search engine optimization because Google is looking for those elements. It's going to point back to your core website, which will expand on your credentials and credibility. By the way, if you don't already have a copy of my book, Establishing Instant Credibility, uh, you're going to want to reach out to me at the website, uh, www.adbriefings.co.uk, and I'll send you a link so you can get a copy. Um, but or you're just going to search for it because it should be available in where all major books are sold. But establishing instant credibility is really about how do you show up? How do you present yourself as a unique individual? And that's going to be part of your byline. Now, most bylines, you're only going to get to put a few sentences in. So you really want to distill down who you are as an author and why does it matter to a specific audience and then build on the the article itself so that someone can reach out to you with questions, uh, with uh, a, a scheduling an appointment or a setting up a discovery call. But again, depending on what platform, the byline needs to be there always, but uh, you may be limited to what you can include in that byline. Another factor is, is going to be in any piece of content you create, it's going to be a headline of some sort that calls out your audience. Now, it could be a prehead. So, for example, I opened this with attention copywriters and marketers who may write content for someone else or write content for yourself. What are the key things that you need to uh, write copy that generates leads? So I built into this presentation an example, but every piece of content you write. If you write an email letter to somebody, maybe it's a cold contact, it's going to open with the benefits that they receive and why you're writing them. Uh, and then that's going to go before the byline at the end, which could be the concluding statement about who you are and why it was important that you contacted them. Uh, the, the headline, the, the prehead, that first paragraph is essential, and you're going to spend extra time on that to make sure that every communications you have has these key elements. You're also going to present yourself as an expert. There has to be at least one piece of tangible evidence in every piece of copy you write that demonstrates your expertise and positions you as someone who can answer questions for your audience. I did that in this podcast by mentioning as an aside my new book, Establishing Instant Credibility. Because if you have enough information and resources to write a book, you are then a expert in that field. Now, that's not necessarily true. You might be an expert in the ability of writing books. But again, it gives someone who's reading your content the opportunity to to know that you have some context. Uh, some other examples that I use is some of the results that my clients have achieved. In the back of one of my books, I have a story about a, an individual who came to the United States as a Cambodian refugee with $2 in his pocket and how he built up his business, yet his business struggled for 10 years. 
And then when he met me, we went through the marketing strategy. We went through the collateral. We went through his story before he was ashamed of his story. And I encouraged him that, you know, not many people get the opportunity to be Cambodian refugees. And let's make the most of it, at least to honor your history. We do these things. And next thing you know, he's picking up more contracts. He's getting in more appointments and he's finally building the business that he wanted. He went from $440,000 a year is the most they've ever made in a 10 year in over the years in the 10 years that they were in business. And in six months, we put him at $1.3 million in received funds. And then by the end of the, the year, they had a consistent backlog. Uh, the company went from to $5 million to $7 million to $22 million a year. And he was finally able to pay himself a, a, a fair wage for the time and effort that he was putting in. Uh, and, and so this is a story that I share in my newsletters. It's a real life event that happened. Now, unfortunately, in this gentleman's situation, the 10 years of suffering uh, played a toll on his heart. He had diabetes. Um, his He physically was healthy. He looked healthy. Um, but inside, uh, he ended up having a heart attack on a tennis court. Now, this is after his successes, and he's able to finally have health insurance and, and finally have uh, life insurance for his family, and he left his family up really well. But the lesson of that story is, is wouldn't it have been nice to learn this information early in your career so that you could have had more consistent success along the way and less wear and tear on your body from the stress that's caused by the expense of experience? See what we've done here? So I'm telling you the different things. I'm sharing with you the different things that you have to have in every piece of content. Yet I'm also layering in these pieces. So do you have a story about a client that you should get permission from that client uh, to share that story as an example of how you've helped somebody avoid a major problem in the context of the content you're delivering right now. There was a time, and I'm going through old content, that I would write an article and it would not have a byline. It would not have a really strong opening. It really, it wouldn't have a clear path of readership. So that's your subheads and then your opening paragraph. Every paragraph has the opening sentence that needs to hook that reader and bring them right back in. It could be bullet points, it could be uh, lists, it could be diagrams. And then uh, very often my older materials don't have any stories in them. They don't have any of these rich experiences that I can use to demonstrate that I'm an expert in what I do. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm, I'm saying it to encourage you that there's something in your life that you've experienced, that you've done, that you've overcome, that your customers, if they knew that you had that richness of experience, they would choose you over anybody else. Now, you're not bragging about these things. I've been divorced. I've been homeless. I've, I've been bankrupt. I've had money problems. I've had situations where I've made millions of dollars in a year. I've made hundreds of millions of dollars for clients. Um, there, you know, we all live a varied life. The key is, is how do you package that life so that when you do a presentation, you have something that's meaningful to the audience. Now, there's another thing you can do because your story, you may not think it's very interesting, but you may have a very interesting story that you picked up through a biography. Uh, you may have a story that you picked up through a mentor, and you may want to share that story instead, but you still need to share that story that has a thread that positions you as a unique character and as someone to contact to solve specific problems. So again, it's easy to produce content. Content marketing is a gimmick to fill up web pages so that advertisers have a space to put advertisements. I want you to be on the side where you're writing the advertisement that drops somebody on your landing page or your sales letter or your special report. And the story and the experience that they have interacting with your materials not only positions you as an expert, but here's another tip that it provides some kind of result in advance. Now, I got this from Frank Kern. Frank Kern is a marketer. He sold uh, millions and millions of dollars of, of materials directly online. Uh, some would consider him an information marketer, but he's really a character in of himself. And what he talks about is to share something of value with your reader that they can prove for themselves that you know what you're talking about because they get some small benefit in advance. 
So for example, in this podcast, I'm laying out the elements, almost like a checklist, that you must have in every piece of content. So the first time you write a piece of content and you check for the byline, you check for a strong header, you check for the, the alternate reading path, you check for a story, you could have two stories or one story as long as they're relevant to the topic, and you're helping the reader solve a small problem, like I'm helping you right now, this checklist is going to help you write better copy. You now say, oh, this author knows what they're talking about. And all these other elements fall into place. They go to the byline. They find a link. They go to your website. They now have some engagement. Now, when you're doing this for a client, it's gonna, you're going to send them to their website. If they're a consultant, they're going to have a consulting website. If they're a, a catalog or a business, they're going to have a business website. When I worked for Lillian Vernon, the content sent people to the catalog. So they told Lillian Vernon's story and the story of Lillian Vernon as it has built up and developed. And then they send to the catalog where you can buy the products and services or and you can have the, the service was uh, customization or embroidery on the uh, fabric items. But ultimately, do you see how this works, folks? Folks, your prospects are wandering around on the Internet. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. And then they find this piece of content that anchors them in experience. It anchors them in understanding. It gives them a little bit of value up front so that they stop their search and they start to do. And then they realize, oh, my gosh, there's so much more I can do. Who has helped me out? They go to you. They go to you over anybody else that's available in the marketplace. They go to you because you had the structure that helped them stop, look, listen, and start to get results. And then that's when they schedule the consultation. That's when they schedule the discovery call. Now, do you need lots of content? I don't think so. Now, I've done hundreds of podcasts. I think I've got more than 500 podcasts. Some of them are published. Some of them have... have I changed services and I didn't migrate them to the new service um, because my methodology is to to turn the content into books, reports, and materials. So the podcasts that are available today that might not be available in two years because I changed platforms actually were probably transcribed and incorporated into some report that comes out on Amazon or, or gets published on the site or gets turned into course material. Um, but again, I'm a newsletter publisher. My primary business is not writing copy for someone else. It's writing copy for myself. And then when I write copy for other people, it tends to be technical documents, uh, policies and materials that build on my expertise. If you're writing content for your client, you must use these elements in the materials, but build on their expertise because 100 pieces of content is no better than 10 pieces of really good content. Do you see what I'm saying here? It just broadcasting more content does not make for better advertising results. It creates an ecosystem for advertisers and does not serve you as an individual. Now, again, you can produce content and then advertise on that content to off make offers in your and create your own medium. That's fine. And if you're not aware, as a copywriter or a marketer, you can especially listening to the podcast, because this is not something you'll see on a web page anywhere, uh, you can submit articles. And if you've got a high-quality article, I will feature you on the site. I'll either have you know, as a guest author, or I will have you otherwise uh, mention you in a program or something. But again, those materials are designed for you to present a credible positioning, and it's great but if it doesn't have the byline, it doesn't have the headlines, it doesn't have the subheads, it doesn't have the bullets, it doesn't have the interesting components, then your reader will just bail out because there's no shortage of content today. There's no shortage of articles and news stories. So again, what the purpose of today's podcast is about, today's episode, is about understanding that, yes, content hubs are important. Writing content is important. Uh, build, but the key elements are far more important in any kind of content you produce. If you created a print brochure, like a trifold brochure, and you put a cover letter on that, and you send it to a highly qualified list of prospects, that will trump hundreds and hundreds of pages of content, 50 to 100 podcast episodes, uh, your own book or anything. Because again, it's the right message in the right market at the right time. And that comes from Dan Kennedy, talks to the market to message match. So what do you deliver in that content? 
that salesmanship in print or that lead generation piece, again, you have these key elements. Now, are there other elements that you should include in every piece of copy you write? There certainly are. But again, if I gave it all to you at one time, there wouldn't be the reason for another podcast episode. Uh, but folks, the biggest reason these podcasts exist is to answer your questions about creating and keeping profitable customers, especially as a copywriter or a marketer. I want to hear that you have a massive backlog of accounts. And then you guys start collaborating with each other to build out agencies and to produce networks of specialists, because that's what gets me excited to hear your success stories. So I'm Justin Hit with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips, and this has been the key elements that you're going to have in every piece of content. But if you have questions, I would love to answer your questions. As I've mentioned here, I write technical materials. I write sales and marketing copy for myself and for select number of private clients. I have subject matter expertise in risk management, business development, and of course, uh, project management. So that's why we talk a lot about the business of copywriting. But if you have specific questions, I have Patrick Quinn's materials and I have a lot of materials from other highly qualified copywriters. And you and I together can learn the elements of, of writing better sales letters, better lead generation pieces, and ultimately content that sells. Because again, we don't want to just vomit up a bunch of stuff on the internet. It's easy to create content these days. We want to deliver value. And I hope I've delivered value to you today with this checklist of what must be included in every piece of copy. It's not all inclusive. There are other things that are useful. But if you don't have these key elements, byline, headlines, opening paragraphs, uh, bullet points, engaging stories, uh, demonstration stories, positioning stories, then you will lose your prospect before you even have a chance to show them how valuable you can be to help them reach their goals. Again, I'm Justin Hit with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips. You can ask your questions at www.adbriefings.co.uk. And again, this podcast is anywhere pod, uh, quality podcasts are available. Be sure to like and subscribe. I may not see your comments on this because our podcast is syndicated to like 30 different locations. Um, so be sure to visit us at www.adbriefings.co.uk. Go to the contact page, ask your questions, and I look forward to to hearing from you.